Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the third day of April, year of our Lord, 2024. I do pray this finds you well. A cold, nasty, early spring day out there. Uh, the rivers are up. I don't think we're in danger of, there might have been a little flash flooding this morning, but they're, uh, they're up. But the as the, I mean, it's a massive storm, so keep an eye out, uh, you know, keep an eye on the on the forecast and stuff because as it warms up next week, a lot of snow to the north of us, a lot of snow, and uh, it may just as find it, hopefully it'll warm up a little more slowly, and uh, the melt will be gradual, and if we need the water, if the rivers have been very low, uh, I'm very thankful for that, uh, but I'll be thankful for warmer weather, which at least as far as we can tell, or predict, it's it is going to happen next week. Today, this morning, was the last of our uh, Easter week matins services, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, we'll be back to just the matins on Monday, next Monday, and Lord willing, I'll be in the sanctuary. We'll see, you know, it depends on a number of different things to try to be there. Uh, and that, you know, if, if I'm there, and it, it, it doesn't help if it's, uh, if it's a little bit unpredictable, I try to be there, uh, but sometimes things just happen. Uh, but if I'm there, the, 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 the church is unlocked and people can come in and, and sit through that. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And this evening, we pick up where we left off last night, looking at Hebrews. Tonight, we're going to read in its entirety, chapter 7, which is a little bit longer. It is uh, 28 verses. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. He is first, by translation of his name, king of righteousness, and then he is also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. He is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. See how great this man was to whom Abram, Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the spoils. And those descendants of Levi who received the priestly office have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers, though these also are descendants descended from Abraham, that this man who does not have his descendant from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. It is beyond dispute, dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. In the one case, tithes are received by mortal men, but in the other case, by one of whom it is testified that he lives. One might even say that Levi himself, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, for he was still in the loins of his ancestor when Melchizedek met him. Now, if perfection had been attainable through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need would there have been for another priest to arise after the order of Melchizedek, rather than one named after the order of Aaron? For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessar necessarily a change in the law as well. For the one of whom these things are spoken belonged to another tribe, in which no one has ever served at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, and in connection with the tribe of Moses, said nothing about priests. This becomes even more evident when another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become a priest not on the basis of a legal requirement concerning bodily descent, but by the power of an indestructible life. For it is witnessed of him, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, a former commandment is set aside because of its weakness and uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced, through which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. For those who formerly became priests were made such with an oath. But this one was made a priest with an oath by the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest. You are a priest forever. 
This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all, when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of oath, the word of the oath which came later than the law, appoints a son who has made who has been made perfect forever. And that is the word of the Lord. And that is an amazing word of the Lord. Again, you see very obviously the 110th Psalm is in clear view there. And it's quoted a number of times in this just this little chapter here. So last night we heard the introduction of this theme of this high priest uh, forever after the order of Melchizedek. And it's interesting what, as chapter 7 begins, it just picks up that thought, remember, the uh, preacher here did not put in chapter and verse numbers. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him. So it's interesting there that Melchizedek blesses Abraham. And to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth of everything. So Abraham gives him a, a, a tithe. He actually sets bread in, in Genesis. Record, he sets bread and wine before Abraham. Deal with that. That's, you know, I mean, what, can, what do you think of when you read that? You think of the Lord's Supper. Now, um, he is first by translation of his name. So Melchizedek is a Hebrew transliteration. Uh, Melech Zedek is king, Melech Zedek, Melech king Zedek righteousness, king of righteousness. So first and foremost, he's the king of righteousness. Hello, Jesus, right? Uh, Jesus is the uh, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he is the Righteous One, the Holy One. Uh, he's the King of Righteousness, and also he is Kingdom of Salem, that's uh, 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 Shalom, uh, uh, peace. Uh, he is King of Peace. And again, then we hear that prophesied not just in the 110th Psalm, but in places like Isaiah, uh, Everlasting Father, you know, Prince of Peace. He is without father, father and mother. Now, this is debated throughout the history of the church, who was Melchizedek. Was he simply a man that was the king of Salem that kind of shows up and then disappears from, you know, from recorded history again? Possibly. Uh, um, certainly could be true. It doesn't change the, the, the three sort of things we put before you that have been that are sort of the front runners. It doesn't change what, 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 what uh, uh, the preacher here is trying to say. Um, but it is interesting, you know, cause, you know, the unusual name, king of righteousness, and then from Salem, peace, and he sets bread and wine before Abraham. You know, it's going to happen to us on Sunday. The king is going to set bread and wine before us. And we give our tithes, and, and you know, we, we, we sacrifice ourselves in church financially, of course. Keeps the lights on, keeps me paid. Uh, and then it, uh, um, you know, you go out and you sacrifice, you, 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 you tithe by your life uh, amongst your neighbors. You, you honor God in that way. So, this Prince of Peace... Um, he's without father, mother. He just shows up, and he does this remarkable thing. So, possibly just a man. Okay, uh, one of the sons of Noah, Shem. Uh, timelines work. Uh, I believe that's, if memory serves me, that's who Luther thought it was, or others. And many of the ancient church fathers thought it was the pre-incarnate Christ, Christ Himself. Very well could have been. And I think that's probably where I fall down. Certainly, remember, Christ is eternal. He is the eternal son of God. He, uh, that means he's always begotten, eternally begotten. There's always been a son, always been a father. He becomes incarnate. I mean, he becomes enfleshed. The incarnation happens in time. He walks among us in time. Uh, he's both fully God and fully man in the one person. It's only one person, Jesus Christ. So, but, he, you know, uh, this, this king in, 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 in Genesis that is repeated in the 110th Psalm, just, and then here in Hebrews, sort of shows up. And then disappears. And he's never mentioned again until you get to the 110th Psalm. And now, and now this. Must have stuck, though, because you have this 110th Psalm. And, and remember that 110th Psalm. In fact, let's let's just very quickly go back to that. Um, I know I've read this for you a couple of times. It's a short psalm. so uh, And you'll hear the language. So this is a psalm of David. Verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Uh, 
And that's going to be quoted in the New Testament as well, because, you know, God, it's interesting language. The Lord said to my Lord, uh, you know, that can't be David, you know, speaking of David. Anyway, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter, rule in the midst of your enemies. You will, your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. Interesting language there, holy garments. And it's, remember, this is looking forward. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. God doesn't lie, doesn't change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's like Jesus passed some tests or something like that. What that means is that God in his, in his eternal plan of salvation for us to restore our relationship with him, to you know, bring us back to the humanity that we were created to be, uh, um, it gives us this priest that intercedes for us, that was sacrificed for us, as we hear in Hebrews, uh, um, you know, once for all. It doesn't need to be done again. He is forever the high priest. He's forever, you know, we, Christ has many roles, but he's forever interceding for us. We don't need another priest. That's the whole point of this chapter 7. So uh, uh, there, the psalmist goes on a few other verses after that, but I'll, I'll come back to chapter 7 of Hebrews now. So you see why this is in this sermon. It's interesting to think. So uh, again, we don't really know, but I, you know, the, it's to the Hebrews. So it is, it, this is written to a Jewish audience, and obviously, it's relying heavily on the New Testament: Leviticus, Exodus, the hundred Genesis, the hundred tenth Psalm, uh, the Torah, and uh, um, uh, that's you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So the assumption is there that the 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 hearer is familiar with the Old Testament, and then pointing them forward using the Old Testament, mind you. And say, this is the one who was spoken of, the priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, the one who sits on the throne forever, the one who is the one sacrificed of all. And that means everything for you. Uh, that you know that that is the gospel that that Christ has done it. That I am free. Uh, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. That comes off the lips of our Lord. John records that. That yeah, I will struggle with sin to the day I die, like Saint Paul. Say, well, who will save me from this body of death, a wretched man that I am? And yet I look to Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God, there is no condemnation in Him. That's freedom. That means I can go out and love my neighbor and fail and not get it right, and then I get it wrong, and know that my good works can be tainted with selfishness, and it's okay because I am covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a license for me to go out and live like a pig, you know. But it is, you know. Let's say I have lived like a pig. When it's like, oh my gosh, what have I done? There's, there's Christ. There's forgiveness. There is, man, we need it every day. So, uh, remarkable what this text is telling us about who Jesus is and, the, and the, the argument that is slowly building. It's phenomenal. So, uh, the son continues as a priest forever. As he got, and this is the comparison between this Melchizedek of the Old Testament and Jesus Christ. It's pointing it forward that the son is this priest forever. Uh, and he goes on to talk about Abraham and Levi. And it's interesting because he makes the point. Now, you know, something changed because the Levites were the priests. Now, they were one of the tribes, uh, one of the children of uh, Abraham had a child named Isaac. Isaac had a child named Jacob. Jacob had, and some, yeah, I think you all know this, just um, Jacob had 12 children. Uh, and uh, uh, between them and their grand. They become the tribes of Israel um, and uh, um, uh, 12 tribes. Uh, that's a huge number. There's 12 apostles. There's uh, uh, the 12 comes up over and over again. Uh, anyway, Levite are the priests. So when the when the Holy Land is is uh, uh, through the, the conquest after the time of Moses under the leadership of Joshua, uh, the land is divided up in the 11th into 12 parcels. The Levites, however, do not get a, a, a settlement. They don't get land because they're the priests. They live amongst the people. Uh, still, you end up with 12 sort of police, you know, like counties, or, or you want to look at it that way, uh, because the Joseph's two sons round out the 12, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, um, and they become the, 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 the Samaritans, and uh, it does not go well for Ephraim uh, by his own fault. So anyway, Levites are the priests. All right, and and they are interceding. They have to. They have to. We've already heard. They have to. Uh, we're gonna hear it again. They have to make atonement for their own sins, because uh, they, you know, they sin just like we all do, like I do. Uh, but then something happens. There's another priesthood. Okay, and this doesn't come 
from Levite. Christ is not from the tribe uh, of the uh, of Levi. He's from the tribe of Judah. He's the line of the tribe of Judah. Not they're not the priestly clan at all. And that's mentioned there here. Um, there's uh, another tribe which no one has ever. There's nobody has ever served at the altar because they're not Levites. So something is different here. So there's not all of a sudden the law is different. You know. So uh, uh, it, it's really interesting that that little phrase in there. So uh, let me read it again here. Um, uh, uh, when there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the law as well. Right, so we are under the law of grace, if you will, and that the one priest who's uh, has done it for all of us. Uh, and then again, it's repeated. You are you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And then again, the Lord has sworn he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. That's a beautiful statement in this section. And it was not without an oath. So God promised that this one, Christ our Lord, would be the one interceding for us forever. Uh, you know, um, and he is. Think about it. At this very moment. He's praying for us. He's interceding for us. His blood is interposing for us. You know, it, it, and it is and it is meriting forgiveness for us. Um, uh, so uh, uh, how does this how does this end? Um, he has no need like those high priests to offer sacrifices daily because they were beset with sin. They all died, right? You know, there's there are new priests have to be coming up all the time. He continues forever, but he says this. Um, he has no need like the high priest to offer sacrifices daily first for his own sin and then for those of the people. Since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. So not only is he the priest, he's the sacrifice. And he did it once, once for all. That's a powerful statement. What have you done that isn't covered by the once for all? Who are you that you are not covered by the once for all? It's you. This was all for you. As I mentioned this morning. You're part of that once for all. Your sin is part of that once for all. It has been put to death in Christ. Paid for by his blood. And he is now interceding for you before the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no one comes to the Father but but by me. That's what this looks like. That, that's why he says those things. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We'll come back to that tomorrow. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father. We pray for marriages of your people, families of your people, that husbands and wives, parents and children would live in ordered harmony according to your good and gracious word. As always, we pray, pray for parents who must raise children alone, that you'd strengthen them and keep them healthy and keep them from falling into loneliness and despair. And be with us, their neighbors, that we may help them according to, according to the means you give us. May we, as we uphold our families, be a light to our communities and may we uh, uphold these gifts that are so that are such a great benefit to our communities and to our neighborhoods heavenly father as always we ask you to be with those uh, who are crying out to you for healing be with our brothers and sisters in christ myron dennis dave don ardo klaus lou ray pat be with dear friends of our congregation betty jeremy joan bob jenny Luke, Aaron, Amy, Don, Fern, Allie, Allison, Scott, Ashley, Camden, Jason, Beth, Eric, Tom, Jim, Bob, Clint, Paul, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Marlis, Anita, Dave, Dylan, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Lori, Chris, John, Heather, Dawn, Liberty, Joe, Phil, Katie, Bethany, Michelle, Amber, and all who are crying out to you. Heavenly Father, again, place your healing hand upon them according to your good and gracious will. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angels be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing 464, The Strife is Or the Battle is Done. That's our opening hymn. That was our opening hymn for the Easter sunrise service. Alleluia. 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 The strife is o'er, the battle done. Now is the victor's triumph won. Now be the song of praise begun. Alleluia. The powers of death have done their worst. But Christ their legions hath dispersed. Let shouts of holy joy outburst. Alleluia. The three sad days have quickly sped. His raises glorious from the dead. All glory to our risen head. Alleluia. He broke the age-bound chains of hell. The bars from heaven's high portals fell. Let hymns of praise his triumph tell. Alleluia. Lord, by the stripes which wounded thee, from death's dread sting thy servants free, that we may live and sing to thee. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. God's grace will see you tomorrow night. Good night.